You're listening to Lead Stories on PRN.FM. I'm Eutrice Lead. Our guest apparently is caught up. He's <laughs> His book uh, is uh, being released this week, and he was supposed to be in studio by now, but I understand he's caught up. He's Dr. Nafis Ahmed, and we will probably try to reschedule so that he can be with us to discuss a very important subject about the Islamist insurgency in the entire Middle East and North Africa and repeated interventions by Europe and the West as setting the stage for a global apocalypse. Very heavy subject, but apparently he is delayed in getting to the studio. But let's therefore continue the conversation. And I want to make myself clear about certain things. It it bothered me when I read today that you know, we, 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 we see all these pieces happening, and it is all predicated on one thing, and that is the death of black men. The death of anybody by police, a brutal force, should trouble everybody. But we're talking about a consistent pattern, and as I said before, when something happens consistently and happens consistently over a very long period of time, it is as good as fact. And it is good that the president is animated about this, he's become involved in that, and people are acting, oh my gosh, isn't this great? Barack Obama is actually responding to the black community, and for that we should be grateful. And I say, well, you know, fine, if that's what you want to think. Here's what I think. This, too is the reason for the heavy investment African Americans have made in this president. So there's no favor being done here. Frankly, I think he is involved because it has dawned on him in year six that there is a huge distance between him and the community that brought him into power. And that is by his own doing. That is why his volition and the design of people to whom he is answering. So I'm glad that uh, this has served as a wake-up call of sorts. But it is uh, the tragedy all the more that it takes this to bring the president closer to his political base. It's unfortunate. And even so... I mean, he's gone as far as he diplomatically can go. He can't be too black now. So he's been measuredly black in terms of identifying with the humanity of the situation. He still has to keep it in check so as not to frighten white America. I'm not being too black here. I'm just being mildly black. (laughs) Okay, we get it. We'll take it. But let's not be disillusioned about it. The second thing is, and, and, and I'm coming back to the role of the lawyers and the so-called leaders, people like Sharpton and Jackson and others, who have hijacked this thing called the civil rights movement. I remarked about it many times before, about the commodification of suffering the entrepreneurial endeavors that are predicated on the suffering and death and pain of black people. You have these folks who have imposed themselves as leaders, as the go-to people, the people who are, quote, in charge of, of, they're the, in charge, that's their portfolio. We are in charge of black folks. So you can't talk to black people unless you come through us. Well, okay. If that's what you have decided that you want to do, then you can't occupy that position and still be private about it. You're now in, you are now to be publicly accountable. You are to account to the people since it is on the people that your entire profile rests. 
you are now important to the Democratic Party because you you have the you, you have fashioned yourself as the person who keeps the lid on the community. You are the go to guy or the go to guys. So why should you be an, able to enjoy this this privacy, this shield that nobody is to know anything else beyond the fact that you can pop up behind microphones whenever you decide to and you call news conferences and you are transacting business in the people's name. And look what we've gotten. The same lawyer who was involved in the Trayvon Martin case is involved in the Michael Brown case. And we see the same pattern. I am not opposed to anybody making money. I'm not opposed to anybody uh, achieving professional uh, uh, acclaim. But I'm saying, if you're going to present yourselves as as, uh, representatives, not just of the people, but of the aspirations of people and the necessities of people, then you have to do business in a different way or else get out of the way. If if this is your personal business, if this is your personal case, then shut up. We shouldn't know anything about it. But you're out there calling for people to demonstrate. You're calling for people to take specific actions You're calling for people to do things that are getting them arrested and they're putting them in harm's way and you're not taking responsibility for that, but you you are taking the, uh, the, 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 the credibility of all of that strictly to enhance your personal and professional private endeavors. Now that's where we have a problem. If this is your personal business, keep it personal and shut up. We go away, do your thing in private, you know, Trent, go to court and do your thing privately the way all other lawyers do. But when you make this a public matter and when you deliberately seek the input of the public in a particular way that is even harming them, And you walk away from that and you dust your shoes off and you say, well, that has nothing to do with me. I got what I wanted. I got the press to show up. I got the the coverage that I needed. I got the television lights shining on me. I got my moment of glory. And that will now help me. That will now build my, my, my currency to... In, in, in the white world, where basically I am positioning myself as the middleman. That is my, 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 my business. I'm now in business. I can help you deal, quote unquote, with the black community. I can take pressure off and I could apply pressure if it comes to that. But this is my own private business. So these folks are trading not only on the energy of the the community in this way without giving anything back, but they're trading on a history. And this is what is so profoundly offensive. They're trading in on a history of struggle in which people put their lives on the line their lives, their livelihoods, their reputations, their families, all on the line in the name of progress and in the name of freedom for their people. And in so doing, the struggles of black America have humanized America, all of America. Let's not, let's not forget that. The struggles of black America have humanized all of America. 
That is what I played a, a, a tape of, of Adam Clayton Powell saying that the world measures America with the black yardstick. They measure America in terms of how it is dealing with black people. And we don't want to be uh, uh, monogamous here. We don't want to just say that this is just only for black people. We know Native Americans suffer terribly. People of color generally in this country. But the struggles of blacks have taken a special place in the narrative, the historical narrative and the social narrative, the economic narrative, the international narrative of America. There's no question about that. So when these folks come around and they roll up to the demonstration in their air-conditioned limousines and they come out to their news conferences in their fine Italian cut suits and their silk ties and they're now discussing these issues as if they're merely theoretical uh, questions and they're not saying what they're about and what they truly are about is, is, is offensive, basically. You have no guts, you have no intention, you have no uh, uh, care about saying, you know what, part of what we're doing here, we have got to put we have got to take care of what the calling is here. Yes, we take care of the, the, the issue, the instant issue, but we know that the larger picture is to put in place those structures that make it impossible or close to impossible that these things would happen over and over and over again. But they've abandoned that, and deliberately so and with the full expectation that there is to be no accountability for it. They are, uh, they are uh, betraying this, this history, which should be sacred. This is a sacred trust. This is not something that you play around with blithely. This is not about how many news conferences that you can have. This is at the end of the day, can you show that you have en actually engaged in struggle with your nice Italian suits and your silk ties? It should bother these people that this is where they have come. It should bother them even more that this is where they have placed their people as automatons running out there because they sincerely, this is what kills me, people sincerely want to change. And anybody who asks them to, to lend a hand, they don't even question it twice. They trust that the leadership is up and up, that they're honest and forthright and committed that there's integrity there, that they, they are observing a long-held history of obligation, and that they're doing, this is just their turn at, at bat, they're doing their job. And the, the evidence will show they made a remarkable effort at staying true to that history. But no. These are sharks and predators. These are entrepreneurs. These are people who see that they could make a ton of money, and they do. And I have no problem with people being successful making a lot of money. But not this way. And if you're making money this way, be expect, expect to be called out. These are very serious times. The FBI's own figures are saying, on average every year, 400 people are killed by police. And even the FBI's own figures, they're saying, are underreported. 400 people a year. And you're footsing around like this. 
and making a spectacle of things. And where we need your, your, your hard work and where we need you to, to really show off, it would be a joy to have you show off with your silk, silk ties and your Italian suits and a, a ton of legal briefs that said, I compelled the state to do something different and we won. No such work. You have no intention of doing that kind of work. So let's get the gullible people, the same contempt that white America historically has had for black America. The, I'm talking about the systems. The same contempt you now have. You can make black folks do anything at your command. And instead of understanding that as an exquisite privilege that is never to be betrayed, you delight in the idea that you have that power and you use it specifically for self-aggrandizement. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. And that is why part of what should happen in these cases and the opportunity presents itself for the community as a whole to really do what I just described as forensic auditing. You match your receipts against what you got for spending. They're not adding up. There's a deficit. And the job now is to remove from our misery the people who have become impediments to progress at all levels. But first, we have to be honest about it. We have to be honest about it. This is not a joke. And then, you know, with people still in jail, and you get back in your air-conditioned limousines and you ride off. You're right out of town. On to the next gig. And you leave all that suffering, added suffering behind you. And it is none of your concern. That's what we have. And those, those actions are the trademark of predators. These are not the actions of people who have a love of community or a sense of obligation to the community. These are the actions of people who have a sense of obligation only to themselves. So we will discuss these cases in this light and come to a different understanding so as to come to a different way of acting and thinking.